Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Pickleball and Politics, where I combine my quest to stay out of the kitchen with my passion for politics. Someone asked me the other day if I could give them an update if I was doing a good job staying out of the kitchen, and I want you to know I'm doing a good job staying out of the both of the kitchens I don't like, so we're doing good on that one. Anyways, for those of you who play Pickleball, congratulations, (laughs) congratulations, <laughs> because I have virtually been unable to play recently one or two games here or there because we are in constant thunderstorms and it just seems like the storms roll through, everything's soaking wet, and then uh, nobody can play when it's finally stopped and it's dry. And this is all we do is, can we can play, can we play, can we play? And when I do that, I'm talking about that I text with all of my pickle people. And then we're like, yeah, I can play um, a Friday at uh, 3.30. And yes, I can play Saturday at 10. And yes, I can play Sunday morning at, you know, 6.15. But um, the weather has not been cooperating. And unfortunately, when the weather is cooperating... It's like 86% humidity, and you're basically dying out there. So my question for all my pickles this week is, how do you stay hydrated? Besides water and all of that stuff, I am taking Powerade now to the court because I just need to keep my electrolytes up a little bit. Water doesn't quite do it for me anymore, not with this weather. That's for sure. So leave me a comment of how you stay hydrated when you're playing pickleball (laughs) and 86% humidity. I actually went and checked and Boston has 86% humidity right now and Boca Raton only has 67. So it is far more humid up here in the Northeast than it is uh, probably in the rest of the country right now. But I know you'll all complain um, that live in Texas and everywhere else. I get it. Everybody's hot right now. It's summer. I hope you're all enjoying uh, your summer. It's just started. It's the best time of the year as far as I'm concerned. And it's that time where you sit back and you kind of relax just a little bit more. Everything just slows down just a tad. Um, Kids are getting out of school and There's just uh, a different vibe in the summer, and I love it. People are on vacation. People are outside. It's the way life should be for the majority of our life, but it's not. So you really have to take this July, August that we've got coming up and hold it, enjoy it. So what I want to talk about today is the Harvard Medical School morgue scandal. And I shouldn't even laugh about it because it's outrageous that we're even talking about this. But more and more, every single day, nothing surprises me anymore. I mean, absolutely nothing surprises me. I'm just basically disgusted half of the time at how low humanity keeps on sinking, lower and lower and lower. So we had the morgue manager and his wife um, were selling body parts out of the morgue. And one of their main um, buyers was a woman who was taking skin and sending it to some fellow freak. Sorry, I'm going there. Some fellow freak in, in Pennsylvania and leatherizing the skin and then putting it over the dolls and selling them. These creepy, disgusting dolls. Like who would want a doll with human skin on it? Come on, that's somebody's mother. That's somebody's sister. That's somebody's grandpa. I mean, ugh, it's just disgusting to think about the whole thing. Now, they weren't just doing that. They were using um, uh, the heads as, as planters and and taking out vertebrae and making vases out of them and all other kinds of creepy things. Um, So it turns out that this is called the red market. And we were talking a lot about this because if you saw my last podcast, we talked about uh, the new Jim Caviezel movie and um, how people are, are, are marketing 
bodies. I mean, literally, they are selling human bodies, remains. Where's the dignity there, huh? Woo, none. So this red market is buying and selling um, and stealing body parts. It's not just always for sale. Um, I would say that the morgue manager was stealing body parts, but that the people who were buying them were buying them, if that makes sense. Uh, it doesn't even to me, but I think you know what I'm saying. So, uh, it got me thinking, why do people want body parts? I mean, the last thing I would ever want in my house is first of all, another vase, to tell you the truth. Don't ever buy me another vase. I've got dozens and dozens of vases. Um, is the last thing I'd want would be a, a vase of, of made out of a vertebrae. I, I mean, how is it even porous? I don't even, I mean, it's so porous. Bones are porous. It wouldn't even, anyways, I don't get it. I wouldn't want it. But I thought to myself, why do people collect these things? And so I started researching online and there was an article on boston.com and it stated that, first of all, there's always been an interest in body parts, unfortunately, since the beginning of time, it has been one of these creepy, disgusting things to do, I guess, a la Frankenstein. I mean, he had jars full of all kinds of things too, didn't he? And so um, the article stated that first of all, there is no part of the human body that somebody doesn't want to collect. It didn't matter what it was. Skulls, uh, organs, genitalia. Uh, they even know people who have jars of, of stillborn fetuses that they collect. I mean, I can't even imagine how disgusting that that is. But researchers and different therapists that talked about it said, that people who are into collecting human remains are very much into controlling a body, anybody. That's what they said, that researchers believe that the motivation comes from controlling people. And that a lot of times these people can't control anybody in their real life. Well, I shouldn't say in their real life, but you know, in their life. And that this becomes their little obsession because they can control these human remains. It's really quite disgusting when you think about it. But they also said that people have always done it. But since the advent of the digital age, the middleman is gone. It's easy to go online and just start searching. You know, I want a head. I need a, 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 a rib. I need some vertebrae. I would like a pelvis bone, you know, and they're able to find it, whether it be on the dark web or they said half the time it's not even on the dark web. You can go on Craigslist, you can go on Instagram, you can go on Twitter and people have all these code words, Reddit. If you ever want to really have a party, go to Reddit. You find everything on Reddit. And that um, the digital age has allowed people to just find these things and purchase them on their own. They don't have to go find some creepy guy down an alley and go through a hidden door to find what they're looking for. Now they can just go, do, 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 I'd like a human head. Oh, here it comes, FedEx delivers. That is gross. There are so many bad things about the internet, and I have to think that this definitely is one. But they also said that the worst part of this red market trade, and this gets back to what we talked about last week in the last episode with um, the trafficking of human, uh, of children, and human trafficking and the trafficking of children, is that it really r removes the element of humanity. Humanity's gone when you start trading and dealing body parts. It's just so, so sad. It just reduces humans who've lived their life as things. The sad part is that these were people who donated their body once they passed. 
they thought for whatever reason that some young doctor entering Harvard would learn something by donating their body because most of these body parts are used as cadavers and young um, students, medical students are, you know, dissecting these and finding out how the body really works. And that needs to be done. Now, maybe in the future with the advent of all kinds of virtual this and virtual that, maybe we won't have to be slicing and dicing people up to learn. But until then, I do believe that it's probably one of the most valuable things for a young doctor to actually have a body in front of him to dissect and to learn from. And they do imagine that this will definitely hurt donations. Um, It did make me rethink being an organ donor, and I am an organ donor, and um, I've always thought it was a great thing to do if I was to die suddenly. I have a great heart and uh, a bunch of other organs. It would be great if somebody else could use them because I won't be needing them anymore. But I will say it has made me rethink that. Um, I think they're two different, um, completely different areas of donation. And uh, But it didn't make me think about it. Uh, I'd love to know if when you heard about this, you wondered if you should not be an organ donor either. Now, their families are going to be suing as they should, um, but it also made me think about what are the funeral homes doing? What are they doing in other hospitals? Harvard Medical School can't be the only one that's doing this, can they? Gosh, I hope they are. Um, And for that, I have to believe that um, the dink of the day, and I forgot my dink of the day the other day, and after it came out, I thought, what happened to my dink of the day? The dink of the day is actually, to me, Harvard Medical School, period. There is no reason why they shouldn't have had much better oversight over their cadavers, over their donations, and uh, so many other universities do. I read that there are other schools that have RFID chips in bodies to make sure they haven't been um, manipulated. Uh, They weigh and measure the cadavers constantly before and after after anything is done on them, and they have a real checks and balances and a respect for the donor. Harvard didn't seem to have any respect at all. And that says a lot about that university, at least it does in my eyes, that they would be, um, that their regulations would be so few and that this man and his wife were just allowed to sell body parts for for years and not go detected. That's terrible. Anyways, leave me a comment. I'd love to know what you uh, think of this video. Tell me what you think of this scandal and so many of the other scandals that we have going around like this. You can reach me on Geta at Pickleball and Politics. You can reach me on Instagram at Pickleball and Politics. You can reach me on Twitter at Pickle and Paul. Go to my website, pickleballandpolitics.com, or you can reach me right here on my YouTube channel, Pickleball and Politics. Um, Leave me a message. Let me know what you think. And uh, one more question. Why do we have such lack of respect for the human body, both when we're alive and dead? Until next time. Thanks for joining me on Pickleball and Politics.